Hi, hi everybody. This is Sarah from Serenity. Today we're going to talk about Pisces season. This is the astrological season of Pisces and it begins February 18th or 19th, depending on where you are in the world, as the sun transitions into this deep and compassionate sign where it will stay until March the 20th or 21st. This is my take on the astrology, and because of that, it may not resonate with everyone. And that's okay. If it doesn't resonate with you, no worries. Just pass it on by, and I do hope you find what you're looking for. So, we're moving into a new season, and I know many people are excited about this change. So, what does this mean? Well, the sun transitions to a new zodiac sign about every 30 days or so, and we call this a season. And everyone, regardless of their sun sign, feels the influence of the current astrological energy and the lessons that are flavored by that sign. Pisces, a mutable water sign, is symbolized by two fish swimming in different directions. Yeah, so that kind of gives you a clue what the energy is going to be like. <laughs> ah, yeah, I'll put some slides up too if you want to know more so I can keep this a, a relatively short, manageable video. I have so many videos to get out. If you haven't already, please be sure and subscribe. We've got forecast for each sign coming out. We've got more lunar astrology coming out. My goal is to make Mondays for affirmations. So yeah, just lots of stuff happening. And you don't want to miss it, so be sure and subscribe. This adaptable sign is ruled by the gas giant Neptune, which is named after the god of the sea. In astrology, Neptune is considered a planet of dreams, psychic power, illusions, fantasy, deception, and confusion. Neptune also rules the subconscious mind and spirituality. It's associated with compassion and mercy, but its negative traits are moodiness, trickery, deceit, guilt, and addiction. So while compassion runs deep in Pisces, it can also turn into codependence if it isn't watched carefully. Yeah, it's it's a really big energy, but it works on a subtle level. So it's kind of like codependence. You don't really know you're in it until it is taken over your life. And then it's rather like waking up from a dream to come out of the energy. In charts, Neptune is known as a generational influence. Because it is so slow moving, it takes 165 years, not days, years, to complete a cycle. Neptune moves into a single sign where it will stay from 13 to 15 years, which in fact will shape a generation. Pisces lessons, thanks to Neptune, are usually focused on soul growth more than on personal growth. And yes, that means the lessons can be tough. When we're in Pisces season, we run the risk of being caught up in fantasy or addiction and becoming paralyzed with too much sensory input. Pisces loves knowledge and good conversation. They love deep topics. They love reading. They love watching films. They love to learn. But their struggle is balancing all these varied interests and not becoming addicted to knowledge or a particular, let's say, hobby and throwing their entire life out of balance. They do have a lot of compassion and there are times too when a Pisces can become too compassionate and end up doing too much for someone. They're usually very intuitive and adaptable too. Most Pisces all have some sort of intuitive ability whether they know it or not. They make incredible artists and musicians as well. Pisces can also easily tap into the collective consciousness and adapt to their surroundings quite easily. They do change jobs or careers pretty frequently, but it's just because they're interested in so many things. So it's not that they can't hold a job. It's more like they're just, you know, being drawn away from a current career into something else. As the last sign of the zodiac, Pisces season is a time of closure. We see it as a time to wrap up the energies of the last 12 months and prepare for the new cycle to begin. We enter Pisces season 2021. We'll be coming back to the pivotal Saturn square as well. So how will this affect us? Pisces season can leave you feeling dreamy, out of focus, kind of lethargic, and just generally out of it. For most signs, this is a great time to just slow down and relax. Tap into the creative energy of Pisces and maybe start a new hobby, learn to paint, reading, writing, drawing, anything like that is encouraged during this deep energy. You'll be a lot more expressive and a lot more thoughtful too in your words. Do something like that and really take this time for self-care as well. The downside though of this Pisces energy for some signs is you slow down so much you just feel stuck. 
you start procrastinating, you don't get, you know, reports done, you don't uh, maybe tidy up the house enough, and maybe you end up kind of feeling moody, maybe melancholy during this time as well. So just be aware of it and maybe re-engage with something from childhood that you used to do, some hobby there that maybe you've left behind, or like I say, learn something new. Focus on positive self-care and move away from things that are not in your best interest, such as, like I say, maybe overeating, over shopping, doing recreational drugs, those type of things. And be sure and ask for help if you need it. The emotional energy and the addictive energy connected to Pisces can be pretty extreme during Pisces season. So just be aware of it and really look at your behavior and see if you need to maybe move into more of a state of moderation. So we have a lot happening in February too. On the 20th, Mercury goes direct. Yay! So communication will become clearer and we'll feel like the fog has lifted. Now we will be in the post-retrograde shadow until March the 15th, I believe. If you want to learn more about Mercury, I'll put a link up here for that video as well. On the 25th, Venus enters Pisces. With the goddess of love and beauty in Pisces, you want to go beyond the illusion of separation. You'll be more likely to forgive and forget and be way more affectionate. The downside to this is you really need to watch over committing yourself and maybe fantasizing a little bit too much about that new relationship. So get your boundaries in order as it's easy to lose yourself in romantic entanglements when Venus is in Pisces. Overall, it's a good time, especially for love. Just make sure you don't do anything rash or that you spend too much time living in a fantasy world. This is a very good alignment and energies will flow nicely during this time. You may find yourself more inclined to be creative and to maybe want to purchase things that are beautiful. We can see our artwork take off, we can see our imagination take off, and our creativity really blossom during this time. On the 27th, we have the Virgo full moon. This is an interesting time when Virgo and Pisces get together. We have the analytical wisdom of Virgo with the emotional intelligence of Pisces. The full moon energy also marks a time when we are finishing projects. We start things on the new moon, but they come to an ending or they become ripe on the full moon. What have you been nurturing for the last 28 days? What have you been working on? Things like that should be coming into fruition. And with the analytic power of Virgo, you should be able to pull back and look at the goals and look at the things you've been doing analytically and see what's working and what's not working. Use the creative energy of Pisces to really understand what maybe you could have done differently and how you can tweak it for the future. While this energy is rather gentle for a change, <laughs> it's still pushing us to find balance between day-to-day obligations obligations and our creative needs such as, you know, downtime to create, downtime to do self-care. It's all about finding balance. So definitely take advantage of this energy. As long as we can resist the urge to overthink everything and try and read too much in other people's actions, then this will be one of the more calming moons of the year. So just sit back, enjoy the change of energy. On March the 4th, Mercury conjuncts Jupiter. So with Mercury coming out of retrograde, this is a great time for tying up any of those contracts or loose ends like that, that maybe, you know, you've put off signing or maybe starting your dating profile, something like that. So this is a time to really get out there and it's a very lucky day as well. So take full advantage of that. This is a time when you'll probably feel pretty sharp and focused as well. On March the 5th, we have a moon wobble, and I'll put a little bit more about that up here on the slides, but just be aware of it. We don't want to talk too much about it to manifest any type of disaster. When the moon wobbles, it's also a time when we can have severe weather too, so keep an eye on the weather. March the 10th, the sun conjuncts Neptune, and yes, speaking of Neptune, and it's been active February and March. We just have to really be careful that we don't end up caught in daydreams or misled. So during this time, definitely trust your instincts, but also use a little common sense as well. March the 13th, we have the new moon in Pisces plus Venus conjuncts Neptune. This is a good alignment, but you may be feeling oversensitive 
emotional and it may be a really tougher time for empaths as you may be feeling those around you more than normal. Focus on your spiritual development during this time as it will be boosted. This is a good time to practice creativity or do something to where you're grounding in nature as well with the weather permitting. You can expect your intuitive or psychic abilities to be ramped up and to be very aware of what's happening in the collective as well as in your own household. So just keep that in mind. March the 15th, Mercury moves into Pisces. As Mercury moves out of Aquarius and into Pisces, we can see that, yeah, things are changing. This could leave us a little bit foggy again if we're not quite used to working with our emotions like this. Get plenty of rest, eat better, and stay grounded. On March the 20th, 21st, we have the equinox and the start of the astrological new year. So this is the end of Pisces season as we welcome Aries season. And I do hope to have another video up shortly about that. Aries is considered the first sign of the Western Zodiac and it is basically the start of a new cycle. I will be offering a spring equinox activation on the 20th as well. I'll put a link here and also in the description box below. We have a lot happening under the influence of Pisces. Overall, it's going to be a good time. We just have to maybe make sure we stay on track. But other than that, yeah, it's going to be a nice reprieve from some of this other energy and we need to take full advantage of it. I hope you enjoyed this little mini reading. If you would like to know more, you can find me at Serenity. And also, if you do like these videos, why not consider becoming a patron? You always get early access to videos as well as other content too. I hope Hope you enjoyed this little mini reading. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Reiki blessings. Bye-bye.